In this section, we're going to talk about two topics that are related to momentum, and that is center of mass and kinetic energy. First, center of mass. The term center of mass and center of gravity are used synonymously in a uniform gravity field to represent the unique po point on in an object or system, which can be used to describe the system's response to external forces and torques. Okay, well, we're going to talk about torque in the next section, actually, maybe two sections from now. Torque is a force that causes a rotation. Um, but what I'd like to do is do a quick example of um, center of mass and show you how it works. So here I have the for a formula for center of mass, and I'm going to jump right into the example and just sh show you how it works. So let's suppose that I had a ruler, and I'm going to go with an English ruler that's... Um, in 12 inches long. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, okay. So here are the markings on my imaginary ruler. And in this example, it says, get a ruler and 20 pennies, place five pennies at three inches, three pennies at five inches, uh, eight pennies at eight inches, and four pennies at 12 inches. And then what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at where the, the ruler will balance. And the process of doing this is called a weighted average. It's literally a weighted average. And the way that we compute a uh, weighted average is we take each mass times its distance from, um, or its distance on a number line. And the neat thing about a ruler is that it is a number line. We've got a number line right there. So my first mass times distance is going to be the five pennies. I'm just going to do my masses in pennies five pennies times three. My next is three pennies times five inches. Next, I have eight times eight and then 12 times four. So I'm gonna add all of this together. And that gives me the total. And it's 142, um, and it's it's penny inches. 142 pennies times inches. Okay, now to find the center of mass, what I'm going to do is divide by the total number of mass. So I'm going to take 142 and divide by my 20 pennies and I get 7.1. So this object should balance about here. If I put a pivot there, that's where it should balance. So I tried this myself. I couldn't find a perfect ruler in my house. So I'll show you what I did find. Um, there's the thing that I built. My finger's a little bit left of the seven and there it is there. But again, ideally, um, let's see. There we go. Ideally, my pivot point here would be at that 7.1 inches. And again, you can, you can see the number line. Um, and so that weighted average is literally the center of mass or the center of gravity of the system. Okay, so let's look at another example. Um, find the center of mass of a system if the person has a mass of 100 kilograms and the raft has a mass of 200 kilograms. So this um, system is already drawn for me. I have a number line and I have the mass. This person's 100 kilograms 
and the raft is 200 kilograms. And I'm going to use the location of the center of mass of the raft as, as its location. So um, for only two objects, I would I take each mass times its distance on the number line, and then again divide by the total number of mass, or a total amount of mass. So it's going to be 100 times negative 5 plus... 200 times 0, this is at 0, and then divide by the total number of mass, which is 300. So this is going to be negative 500 divided by 300, or negative 5 thirds, which is negative 1.67. So the center of mass of the system is here. negative 1.67 on this number line, and indeed, that's where the dot is. Now, um, mathematically, that, may, that seems hopefully pretty concrete to you. The center of mass is closer to the center of mass of the heavier object, the raft, okay? But here's the part that maybe is a little more surprising. Let's look at this interactive if we look at a dynamic system where a person is actually walking on the raft, what ends up happening is that the center of mass of the system doesn't move. And maybe you've had this experience of trying to get out of a boat or move around in a boat or on maybe a stand-up paddleboard. Um, maybe you are... Maybe you were trying to... Oops. There we go. Maybe you were trying to get to the rat to the dock over here, and um, you you tried to walk over there, but the raft kept sliding underneath you. I don't know if you ever had that experience, but it's a consequence of this idea that the center of mass stays in the same place because there's no net external force on the system. Okay, so there's the. The upshot, the center of mass of the system does not move if there is not a net unbalanced force acting on the system. Okay, that's one big idea that we wanted to get across. The other big idea we'd like to get across today is about kinetic energy. So we've been talking about momentum and we learned that momentum is always conserved in both elastic and inelastic collisions. Kinetic energy is only conserved in perfectly elastic collisions and it is not conserved in inelastic collisions or partially elastic collisions. In other words, some energy is dissipated. It could be heat, friction, sound, but, um, and, and the other thing we, we should say is that a perfectly elastic collision is really a theoretical construct. Um, I don't know about you all, when I was a kid, I used to go to those coin, things where you'd put in a quarter and get out a super ball. I was always looking for the perfect super ball. I never found it. I never, the super ball never bounced up quite to where I dropped it. Um, there are no, there are no uh, perfectly elastic collisions. Okay, let's do an example. A woman, mass M, and her son, mass little m, are standing at rest face to face on ice skates on a frozen pond. They push apart from each other and the son moves with speed v. Derive an expression for the spe speed of the mother. So when we do a problem like this, we're going to derive our expression in terms of what's already been given. So here's the mom. Here's the son. We'll have him be a little bit smaller. And uh, he's going to go this way, and she's going to go that way. So we'll call this V-mom. So the mass of the mother times the velocity of the mother. Or should I stick with mom? V-mom. Should equal be equal and opposite to the mass of the sun times the velocity of the sun. And if I wanted to solve for V mom, I would just divide. So I would get that V mom equals M, little m, little v over capital M. 
Okay, determine the total kinetic energy before and after the push. So before the push, they both have velocities of zero. So the kinetic energy is zero, okay? After the push, the kinetic energy of the sun is one half lowercase m v squared. The kinetic energy of the mom is one half capital M, and now I'm gonna use her velocity, which was this number, little m v over big M squared. And I could simplify this, I think. Let's see if I remember how to do algebra. One of these M's cancels. So I could write one half um, little m v squared divided by m. So her kinetic energy is less than her son's. Um, okay, so this is interesting. We had no kinetic energy before the collision. This is an explosive collision. They push apart. And we do have kinetic energy after we would add these two together. So it would be one half mv squared for the sun plus one half mv squared over m, big M for the mom. Is kinetic energy conserved? No, because it's not the same before and after. What accounts for the difference? Well, they did work. The mom and the son did work on each other. They pushed apart and that work went into the change of kinetic energy. And so we always wanna look out for those situations. How does the magnitude and direction of the average force exerted on the mother by the son during the push compare to those of the average, I should say that, that of the average force exerted on the son by the mother? So this is a Newton third law um, question. The forces should be equal and opposite. Uh, Newton's third law. So the push of the sun on the mother should be equal and opposite to the push of the mother on the sun. Oops. That should be an F. All right. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in class.